Hey RPK, welcome for joining us today. I know, so excited, right? So, we're at the end of the month. All month long, we have been focusing on faith, right? That's right. Do you remember what it is? Come on, you can say it with me, right? We're trusting in God for what we can't see because of what we can see. Yep, that's right. And you know what's crazy? I don't know if you guys even remember because it was so long ago, but this whole year we've been going through our big timeline, right? Going through God's story because that's the thing, right? This book of the Bible, uh, there's one big story behind it and we've made it all the way through to the very end. I cannot believe that we're actually at the end of our timeline. Right, I know, amazing. We've gone through 66 books and today wow. we're gonna talk about the very last book in the Bible, the book of Revelation. Yeah, so the book of Revelation is a very interesting book. It was written by John and uh, it, it's actually a lot about a vision that he saw. Now what we do know is, is at this time in his life, John was getting towards the end of his life and, uh, and he had seen a lot of bad things happen. Uh, but at the time he's writing his book, he's actually on an island that's designed just for prisoners, right? So you can't get off the island. He's there with just these prisoners all by himself, right? He, he's doing this because the only thing he's ever done is tell people about Jesus. And so that's what's happened is in in spite of all the times he's he's gone to prison and all the terrible things that he's seen when people speak up and, and preach the message of Christ, he just keeps doing it and he just won't stop. So they finally go, you know what? You're old, we're done with you. Go away to this island. We don't want to hear about it anymore. It's true. Yeah. John outlived all of Jesus' other disciples. Yeah. And with that, he got to see lots of amazing things. Because when you live a long time, you get to see a lot of amazing things. But like Caleb was saying, he also got to see some hard things. One of the things I'm thinking he would probably excited about was to realize, hey, when I started following Jesus, there was just a few people. And now there's tons of people all over the world following Jesus. That's right. Yeah. So, you know, when John started preaching this message, you know, he did see a lot of bad things, right? He saw people beaten for talking about Jesus and for spreading the gospel. He saw people thrown in jail, um, really harsh punishments. He even saw people that actually gave up their lives uh, to get this message out there. And he was very fortunate uh, that that didn't happen to him, uh, but he saw a lot, a lot of hard things. But what's cool is at this point in his life, he's now starting to see this momentum. He's starting to see this, this change where the gospel is not, like Susan just said, not just this handful of people, but he's starting to see where it's like spreading out, not only in the city that he's in, or the country that he's in, man, this thing is spreading out over the whole world. And it's a very exciting thing for him to see. So before we jump into the story, you know what? Let's watch this video and worship together. And then we'll see you on the other side, okay? Dear God, I'm Alex, and this is my new journal. Yay! <laughs> well, maybe not so new. I got it for my birthday a couple months ago, but this is the first time I'm writing in it. Mom said it was to write down any time I saw you at work, and I haven't been able to see you. Until today. It's not that I haven't been looking for you. I know you're there when I see the clouds and trees and animals, but I mean, that's stuff you made. Isn't it? It's not you. Okay, so this morning, Cal invited me to go with him and his little brother. Every month, they go and help with the Foster Care Support Foundation. It's a place you can take clothes and toys and furniture and things you don't have a need for anymore. Other people who do need them can pick them up or sometimes buy them. I was helping to organize clothes when I started to notice this one guy. He was about my age but it was like he was so comfortable. Every time a family came in, he would make sure they all had lunches. He was packing them as fast as he could, and then he wouldn't just hand it to them. He would smile and talk with them and make some jokes. You could tell he was giving out more than just lunch. He was giving out hope and love. Sometime today, I realized that was you at work. 
That was you, God. And I got to see it. Amazing. Thank you, and please help me to see more of what you are doing. Love, Alex. Oh, P.S. I'll be writing to you more often now. Hey, RPK. We're at the end of July. Wow. And that means we're wrapping up our two months talking about faith. I hope that you learned as much as I did this month as we talked about faith. Our basic truth this weekend is I can trust God no matter what. And I mean, think about it. The same power that raised Jesus in the, from the grave lives in us when we ask him to live in our heart. So let's sing about it. The same power. Today is following Jesus can turn out better than you ever imagined. He is amazing. And we're going to put our hope in him today. If you haven't done that yet, I want you to think about it while you're watching this message today. We're going to sing in you alone. Let's sing it to him. are amazing you hold me up with your hand you give me faith and i will put my hope in you alone in you alone let's sing that again god of heaven and earth you are amazing you hold me up with your hand you give me faith and
hold me up with your hand You give me faith and I will put my hope in you alone Let's sing that one more time Come on, come on, sing it to him God of heaven and earth, you are amazing You hold me up with your hand You give me faith and I will put my hope in you alone In you alone Will you bow your heads with me? God of heaven, you truly are amazing And it's because of you that we have hope. It's because of you that we can have faith. Thank you that you hold us, that you lift us up with your hand. And it's incredible to think that when we follow you, it can be greater than we have ever dreamed or imagined. What a gift. You are a gift to us. And we accept you today. We love you, we praise you, and we give all the glory to you. And it's in your beautiful name that we pray. Amen. I'm Erica and welcome to my Steam Lab! I've got something extra special to show you today and I have faith that it will be my coolest discovery yet! Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. And what I can see is this awesome telescope! Ooh. Everything! Wow. I am super excited for what we'll be able to see through this telescope. Stars, planets, galaxies, satellites, space exploring cats. Well, maybe not the cats. There's a skylight in the lab. So I can see all the cool stuff from right here. I just have to finish focusing the telescope. Okay, while I focus on the telescope, why don't you guys focus on the awesome Bible story today? <laughs> it's out of this world. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verses 3 to 5. John squinted against the blinding glare of the afternoon sun. Just a short distance away, frothy waves crashed against craggy rocks and foamed over white sands. This island of Patmos was isolated and rocky, but the view was stunning, surrounded by brilliant blue sea and sky. Most beautiful prison on earth. Though he wasn't chained up, John was in jail. The Roman emperor who was unable to make John stop preaching about Jesus had exiled him to this prison colony where many prisoners worked in the mines. There was no way off the island. So John was now very old, living out his final years on the island of Patmos with a handful of criminals. I can share the story of Jesus with them too. John settled into a shallow cave on shore to take shelter from the heat. He closed his eyes. I've seen so much. John had lived longer than any of the other of Jesus' disciples. He had watched the early church grow while the story of Jesus spread fast and bright as wildfire. But he had also seen terrible things happen to those who believed in Jesus. In fact, many people died just for talking about Jesus. We saw everything Jesus did. We can believe he'll be with us forever, even through death. 
Despite the threats and persecution, more people than ever were following Jesus. God's story was traveling from one end of the world to the other, just like Jesus said it would. I wonder why I've been allowed to live this long. In the cool of the shallow cave, John began to relax. His head was nodding. Until a voice like a trumpet sounded behind him. Write on a scroll what you see. John blinked. Was he awake or dreaming? Wait, what? Uh, I don't see. Oh. Turning, John saw Jesus himself, his eyes blazing with intensity. Do not be afraid. I was dead. But look, I am alive forever and ever. Write about what is happening now and what will happen later. John's mind worked quickly, trying to grasp what was happening. It appeared that God was trying to show him a picture of things that would happen in the future, and he wanted John to write them down and show them to others so that they could believe too. Yes, Lord. Do you mind if I grab a scroll? Oh, and a quill. I don't want to forget anything. John watched, amazed, as God showed him many things that were coming. Some were wonderful, some were terrible, some were mysterious. After the vision ended, John began a letter to several of the new churches. I, John, am writing this. I am a friend who suffers like you. As members of Jesus' royal family, we can put up with anything that happens to us. John explained every strange and amazing thing he had seen. Some of it made him tremble. Others wouldn't make sense until the right time had come. But the last part of his vision. That's the very best part. I can't wait to write all about it. God had shown John how the whole story will turn out for everyone who believes in Jesus. Carefully, he recalled all the incredible things he'd seen. How am I going to do this? I mean, there's no way that words can capture it. But I have to try. It's just a picture until they get to see for themselves how real and breathtaking it will be. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. John remembered the words that Jesus had spoken while he was on earth, right before his death and return to life. There are many rooms in my father's house. I am going there to prepare a place for you. If I go and do that, I will come back, and I will take you to be with me. Then you will also be where I am. That's what I saw. It's the special place Jesus is making for each one of us, a place where we will never be apart from God. John recalled the next scene from his vision. He saw a great white throne. I heard a loud voice from the throne. It said, now God makes his home with people. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or sadness. There will be no more crying or pain. John paused as he stared in wonder at what he had just written down. All of these terrible things we've seen, people sick and hurt, being mocked and put in jail, all of it will be made right. Something else stood out to John. Light. There was so much light. The city does not need the sun or moon to shine on it. God's glory is its light. And the Lamb, Jesus, is its lamp. Its gates will never be shut because there will be no night there. The place John had seen wasn't just filled with light. It was beautiful, too. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life. It was as clear as crystal. It flowed from the throne of God and of the Lamb. It flowed down the middle of the city's main street. On each side of the river stood the tree of life. Its fruit was ripe every month. The leaves of the tree bring healing to the nations. Once again, John lifted his pen from the page. It just seemed impossible to share the real glory of what he had seen with tiny black marks on a scroll. He tried again. God's servants will serve him. They will see his face. John felt himself grinning. He could say one thing for sure, no one would be bored. 
he and every other person who believes in God would finally be able to live out what they were created to do fully and completely with no sin or frustration or weariness to get in the way. May the grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. Now, John didn't know exactly when the things God had shown him would take place, and neither do we. But from what we've seen and heard, we know one thing for certain. In the end, God will make everything right for those who trust in him. at things I'm not used to seeing every day. Like today's story, we got a little glimpse of what the future could be like. When Jesus was on earth, he said if anyone puts their faith in him, they'll have a relationship with God that will last forever. That means we can be a part of God's big story, a story that never ends. Now, I don't know what you imagine when you think about heaven. Maybe it's clouds and harps and angels flying around. Maybe what you imagine is exactly right. Though there's a lot about the future we don't understand, it's exciting to think about the things we do know. When we believe in Jesus, we can look forward to a time when there will be no more pain, no more sadness, everything will be made new. We will be fully alive with God in a way we can't even imagine. That's the one thing to remember today. Following Jesus will turn out greater than you can imagine. Having a glimpse at the future can give us hope here in the present. When we're worried about something or someone, or when we're sad or in pain, we know the bad things won't last forever. God has a future plan for us that we can truly focus on. Speaking of, let's see what this thing is focused on now. <gasps> I don't believe it! Space cats! Oh. Uh... <laughs> Thanks for hanging with me in the lab and keep focusing on the important stuff. See you later. Man, that's such a crazy story. Um, but you know what? I think in all of that, right, you've got John. He has this amazing vision. And you know what I know, you know, not just in this vision, in, in the book of Revelation, right? There's so much about the book that sometimes we can get confused about. And, and we have this kind of desire in us to like want to know uh, what, what the next life brings and, and want to know for a fact. And we don't know the details and that's okay. I'm actually excited, right? I like surprises. So what we can be sure of is that the next life is going to be amazing that God has a plan, he's gonna carry his plan out, right? That's what we see in this story, is that even as we've gone through the entire, you know, all the books of the Bible, right? That God has had a plan from the start and he carried it out through the Bible, he's gonna carry it out in time. And, uh, and we get to be a part of that. So it's just cool to see, even if you don't understand everything, you know that you can trust God, that he's good, that he's got a plan, and that plan is good. You know what I like is that it gives me such comfort to know God is in charge of eternity. Mm -hmm. And you can see it, you can see it from the very start, just like you were saying, all the way through the timeline. It's like, okay, all right, he is in charge. Oh, he's got a plan. Oh, he knows, and he's good. Right. Oh, so helpful. You know what, the, I have, I'm so curious about what our forever home looks like with God. Yeah. I'm like, okay, what does that look like? And there's so much that we don't know. I'm like, sometimes when you don't know, it's kind of better to just focus in on what you do know. So we do know a few things about our forever home, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, so we do know that God's gonna turn all wrongs into right. We do know that we are going to live forever. We do know that we're going to live in his presence. Uh, we know that there's not gonna be pain or death or hurt. I mean, even that alone is just amazing. So you're exactly right, man. Maybe we don't know all the details, all the specifics. Maybe sometimes things can get confusing, but we can hold on to the truth that God's gonna make everything right and that we get to spend eternity in his presence with him no pain, no suffering. I mean, it's going to be great. And you know, it leads us to our bottom line, which is following Jesus will turn out better than you can imagine. Mm. And so let's do our verse. It's our last chance. Ephesians 2.8. Say it with me. Don't leave me, leave me hanging. Here we go. All right. God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. 
Your salvation doesn't come from anything you do. It is God's gift. Yeah, and you know what? It's so cool because God's gift of salvation, um, you know, we know that right now we do live in a fallen world and that right now bad things do happen. So like we get to hold on that. We get to hold on to that promise of of what, you know, Jesus already paid the price. He already died on the cross for our sins. He rose from the dead, he made a way. And uh, we're not there yet. We're still here on this earth. So when bad things happen, when people that we love die, um, we can hold on to that promise that, that God is with us. He has a plan and he's gonna carry that out. And, uh, and it's gonna be great. It's gonna be amazing. We should pray. Yeah, all right. You guys wanna pray? Let's do it. God, we just come before you today and um, God, we just thank you just that we are your children. Uh, we thank you, God, that, um, you know, in spite of our sin nature, uh, in spite of this fallen world, uh, that you didn't, uh, you know, you, you didn't leave us. Uh, you sent your son to come save us. Um, that you wanted that place for us. Uh, and we are so grateful to be able to have that. God, we, we may not understand all of that. We, we don't know what fully happens um, when our time here is over, but what we do know is that you are good uh, and that we cannot wait for the time that we just get to be in your presence for eternity. And we thank you, Jesus, that you came, that you died on the cross for our sins, that you did uh, rise from the dead so that we no longer have to be enslaved to our sin, that we are free in you. And, uh, and we look forward to the time uh, that we get to spend the rest of eternity in your presence. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's it, guys. See you next time. Hey, and it's a new month. I wonder what our new life application is going to be. That's right. Tune in. See you next time. Bye, Bye. guys. Bye.